Hello and welcome to another video lecture. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about cell signaling. Cell signaling is a very important topic because it will help you to have clear understanding about other cellular processes like cell division or programmed cell death and how these well-regulated cellular processes can lead to the development of the cancer in some abnormal conditions. In this lecture, we are going to start from the very basic and very simple concepts of the cell signaling. And in coming lectures, we will discuss in detail the receptors and other pathways. Cell signaling at the most basic level is a kind of molecular dialogue between the cells. In this molecular dialogue, each cell receives signals from its neighboring cells within the body of a multicellular organism. And in return, this cell is capable of sending its own molecular signals to the other cells. And it not only receives signals from other cells or sends signals to the other cells, it also responds to these signals by changing its structure or functional activities. This process of communication between the cells within the multicellular organism, where a cell is capable of receiving signals from other cells or from the environment, and thereby changing its structure or functional activities, and also sending signals to the neighboring cells within the body of this multicellular organism. This whole process of communication between the cells within the multicellular body is called as the cell signaling. At the very basic level, the cell signaling can be of two types. One is this direct cell-cell communication and another is this indirect or you can say the extracellular cell-cell communication. In direct cell communication, the cells are close to each other and when they are too close to each other, they have developed these physical contacts. As you can see, here we have this gap junction. This gap junction is between two cells where the cytoplasmic content is specifically small ions or small molecules can transfer through this gap junction from the cytoplasm of one cell to the cytoplasm of another cell. That is this gap junction acts as a channel through which small molecules can pass from the cytoplasm of one cell to the cytoplasm of another cell. And these two cells are communicating through this gap junction directly. These two cells does not need to synthesize a signaling molecule and this signaling molecule is not being released or being transported and then received by another cell. These cells as they are too close to each other, so they have developed this physical contact and through this physical contact these two cells are communicating. As you can see in the muscles of the heart we have this gap junction is where they are involved in the electronic coupling of the cells where the calcium ions can pass from one cell to the another cell. So these gap junction is these gap junctions are helping these two cells to communicate with each other. So this is the direct communication between two cells. Another example of this direct communication is involved in the notch pathway. For example, you have this notch protein and you are having this delta protein. This notch and delta proteins are involved in direct cellular communication. Here we are having one transmembrane protein or you can say the one protein which is expressed on the plasma membrane. This protein expressed on the plasma membrane acts as a signaling molecule. That is here we are not having the direct connection between the cytoplasm. Here in this case in the case of this gap junction we are having the cytoplasm content can directly pass through this gap junction into the cytoplasm of the neighboring cell. But here in this case these two cells are physically in contact with each other but physically in contact through what through these molecules which are expressed on the plasma membrane these transmembrane proteins present on one cell can act as the signaling molecule and accordingly we have the receptor molecule which is also present on the plasma membrane that will act as the receptor for example, in this notch delta system, we are having this notch protein, this acts as a receptor. This is, is notch protein, 
which acts as a receptor receptor of what receptor of a signal molecule which is called as delta that this one it acts as the signaling molecule now we are having two proteins two transmembrane proteins they are localized that is these two proteins cannot diffuse are not released by the cell they are expressed on the plasma membrane one protein called as a delta protein acts as a signaling molecule signaling molecule directly binds with this receptor molecule present on another cell and directly induces this cell through this nosh protein and as you know this delta protein stimulates this nosh protein and this to this nosh protein gets cleaved and this cleaved portion then activates the gen genetic material present in the nucleus or it activates the transcription factor this nosh pathway as you know plays very important role in the embryonic development here you can see that the these two proteins involved in this nosh protein are directly linked with each other present on these two cells this delta and the nosh protein is they directly communicate or they directly get physically attached with each other and this physical attachment between this delta and the nosh protein leads to the stimulation of this neighboring cell so these are direct cell cell communication where the molecules or the structures present in the two cells in the two neighboring cells directly get physically in contact with each other and through this direct physical contact these two cells can stimulate each other they can have effect on the structure or the physical activity of the cell so this is one method one method of the cell cell signaling where the cells are too close to each other these two cells are physically attached with each other and through this physical attachment these two cells communicate with each other here you can see this gap junction this gap junction we have this two cytoplasm can exchange can transfer small ions through these gap junctions from the cytoplasm of one cell to the another cell A another example is this nosh pathway where we have have the signaling molecule expressed on the plasma membrane of one cell and corresponding receptor expressed on the plasma membrane of another cell this one signaling molecule stimulates this receptor and this nosh protein acting as the receptor then then transfers the signal to the genetic material where it activates some transcription factor so in this way this signal is being transferred from one cell to the another cell through this direct physical contact and here in this direct cell cell communication we are not having any signaling molecule we are not having any soluble signaling molecule which is being synthesized by one cell and released into the extracellular material here we are having this direct physical contact this is one method and it is very simple in case of indirect cell cell communication we are having signaling molecule that is a chemical molecule is being synthesized and that chemical molecule is being released by the cell and then that signaling molecule travels through a medium through a specific medium then it reaches to the target cell and that target cell then receives the signal and then accordingly it responds to this uh, message or this signaling molecule in this indirect method we are having an intermediate that is this signaling molecule in direct method as i said we are not having this intermediate molecule now here you are having in this indirect method one cell or one organ it will act as a source of signal so this cell will act as a source of signal or you can say this is the signaling cell and we are having another cell that will act as a target so in the indirect cell cell communication we are having one cell that will act as the source of the signal and we are having another cell that will act as a target of this signal that is one cell that will produce this signal and that is the source or signaling cell this signal produced by one cell will pass through the medium and will reach to the target and that target cell will receive this signal and in this indirect cell cell communication now we are having three components one is the source of the signal this source of the signal will produce 
a signaling molecule these signaling molecules will be released into the extracellular medium and they will finally pass through some medium and will reach to the target cell and here it will bind with the receptor present on the target cell so indirect cell cell signaling have different stages some stages taking place in the source of the signal and some stages occur specifically in this target cell so what are these stages first stage in this indirect cell cell signaling is the synthesis of signaling molecule and this synthesis of signaling molecule takes place in the source or you can say the signaling cell from which the signal is being produced so we have here first stage is the synthesis second stage of this indirect cell cell communication is followed by the synthesis of signaling molecule the signaling molecule is being released into the extracellular medium so we are having two stages occurring in the source or you can say the signaling cell source of the signal is involved in two processes two stages one is the synthesis and one is this signaling molecule is synthesized then it is being released into the extracellular medium once this signaling molecule you can say this signaling molecule is released it gets enter into this extracellular medium in this extracellular medium now it is being transported so this third is third stage involves the transport of signaling molecule this transport of signaling molecule can occur either through the diffusion if the distance between the source and the target cell is very small and this signaling molecule can easily diffuse through the small distance in the extracellular fluid but if the distance between the source and the target cell is very large signaling molecule is being transported through the blood as you can see in case of the hormones hormones are the signaling molecules which are being transported through the blood from the source of the signal and to the target cell now for example if we are having a signaling molecule in the blood this signaling molecule can circulate throughout the whole body of this organism but it will bind to a specific cell to a specific organ only why because it is having a specific receptors present only on its target cell it cannot bind to any cell it can bind specifically only to its target cell why because it is having these receptors present on its target cell so we are having three stages at the target cell one is the receptor binding in receptor binding this signaling molecule can bind to its specific receptor present only on its target cell so first stage occurring at this target cell is the receptor binding and as i said this receptor binding is very specific because these receptors are present only specifically at its target cell this this signaling molecule binds with the receptor present on the plasma membrane of the target cell this causes conformational changes in this molecule in this receptor molecule because of this conformational changes occurring in this receptor the signal or this message is being transported from this plasma membrane from this inner side of the plasma membrane towards the inner part of the cytoplasm and this transfer this transfer of signal from the plasma membrane towards the nucleus of the cytoplasm occurs through various stages that is it is having multiple molecules which are being serially activated and deactivated and this transfer of signal from the inner side of this plasma membrane towards deep into the cytoplasm occurs at multiple stages and this series of sequences is called as the signal transduction so the fifth stage occurring at the target cell is this signal transduction so this is the fifth stage which takes place at the target cell 
and this involves the series of molecular events related with the transfer of signal from the inner side of this plasma membrane towards deep into the cytoplasm and as I said it involves multiple proteins and these proteins serially transfer a signal from one molecule to another molecule and finally it reaches to the target of this uh, whole signaling cascade and this is the signal transduction and after the signal reaches its target molecule now the cell will respond and sixth stage involved in this cell cell communication through the signaling molecule is cellular response cellular response will tell you how the cell will respond to the signal how will the cell react to this message received through this signaling molecule through it is receptor so this is the cellular response the cell will respond to the signal in a specific way either it will modify its structure or it will modify its functional activity that is the cellular response and last stage involved in this cell cell communication is the neutralization of the effect of this signaling molecule that is we are having now the neutralization of the signal this neutralization stage is the last stage of the cell cell communication that is the effect of the signaling molecule is being neutralized it is being eliminated after the cell has responded it because prolonged presence of this signaling molecule is not suitable for the activity of the cell for example we are having the acetylcholine between the neuromuscular junction this acetylcholine needs to be degraded so we are having the enzymes specifically for this uh, degradation of this acetylcholine and this acetylcholine after it completes its activation it is being degraded by the enzyme enzymatically so this neutralization is the elimination of the effect of produced by this signaling molecule because this signaling molecule present for prolonged period is not suitable so we are having this neutralization effect one is this signaling molecule has bind with this receptor then it has activated the cell and cell has responded accordingly to the signaling molecule now the function of the signaling molecule has completed after the completion of the cellular uh, this response this effect has to be eliminated now we are having these stages which are involved in the cell cell communication with this cell cell communication which specifically occurs indirectly through the synthesis of messenger molecule this messenger molecule is being first synthesized by the cell which acts as the source of the signal then this sig signaling molecule is being released into the extracellular medium and from the extracellular medium it is being transported towards the target cell and this transportation can occur either by through the diffusion through simple diffusion or we are having a transporting medium and this medium transports this signaling molecule to the target cell at the target cell as i said this target cell is having a specific receptors present on the plasma membrane and these signaling molecules specifically bind these receptors present on only on its target cell these receptors are not present in all cells of the body they are present only in specific cells they are expressed only on its target cells and this fourth stage occurring in this cell cell communication is this receptor binding this signaling molecule gets bind with this receptor once this signaling molecule binds with the receptor it causes conformational changes in this receptor molecule these conformational changes induce intracellular second messenger molecules and those messenger molecules will now transfer the signal from the inner side of the cytoplasm towards the nucleus or deep into the cytoplasm and this occurs in through this signal transduction and once the cell is stimulated this will respond this is called as a cellular response and finally this effect of the signaling molecule is being neutralized that is it is being eliminated so this stages involved in the indirect method as i said in the direct method we have we have directly the physical contact between the two cells and there is no signaling molecule 
these two cells will directly communicate with these physical contacts established between these two neighboring cells and here we are having these signaling molecules and through these signaling molecules these two cells the source cell and the target cell they exchange they communicate with each other through this signaling molecule now this indirect cell cell communication occurring through this signaling molecule is basically of three types based on the distance between the source of the signal and the target of the signal and we are having this autocrine signaling then we are having this paracrine signaling and we are having this endocrine signaling in autocrine signaling the signal produced by the cell stimulates the same cell which produces it so we are having source and target in the autocrine is same so in case of autocrine the signaling molecule released by this cell binds with the receptors present on the same cell so in autocrine we are having the signaling molecule produced by the cell once the signaling molecule is produced and it is released into the extracellular medium this signaling molecule finds its receptor in the same cell that is it is having its receptor present on the plasma membrane of the same cell which is producing it and thereby this signaling molecule as it is having the receptor on the same cell it will affect the activity or the structure of the same cell for example we are having some t lymphocytes these t lymphocytes once get bind with the antigens these t lymphocytes produce some growth factors these growth factors once released by this t lymphocytes they bind to the receptor of the same cells and this these growth factors help in the proliferation of these T lymphocytes so this is the autocrine in autocrine you remember that the signaling molecule is being produced by a cell and receptors for these signaling molecules are present on the same cell when the signaling molecule binds to the receptors present on the same cell which is from which the signaling molecule is being produced it stimulates the cell which is producing it so this is the autocrine signaling in paracrine signaling we are having one cell that acts as the signaling cell which produces the signaling molecule and very close to this source of the signal we are having this target cell that is these two cells are very closely spaced they are not far away so this signaling molecule diffuses through this distance and get us bind with this target cell or you can say these sores and the target cell in this paracrine signals are close to each other that is distance between these two sores and target is not too large so this signaling molecule passes or travels this distance through the diffusion it does not need any special mechanism special transporting mechanism to get transported from the source of the signal to the target cell it simply passes in the extracellular fluid diffusion it can diffuse easily but the signaling molecule in this paracrine signaling is having a short life span it is very quickly getting uh, degraded that is why it is very effective up to very short distances for example you can have this neurotransmitter neurotransmitter these neurotransmitters in the synapses or you can say the neuro neuromuscular junctions are being very quickly degraded these are the paracrine signaling molecules they travel very short distances from the source of the signal towards the target cell so this is the paracrine signaling in paracrine signaling we are having the source and the target cell separated by very small distances in addition of the paracrine we are having this endocrine signaling in the indirect cell cell communication mediated by this signaling molecule in endocrine signaling we are having the source of the signal and the target of the signal spaced at large distances that is the distance between the source of the signal and the target of the signal is very large so the signaling molecule from the source of the signal is being carried through the blood that is blood carries this signaling molecule from the source towards the target 
as you can see in case of the hormones hormones as you know are the chemical messengers or you can say the molecules chemical molecules which are carrying the messages from the glands from the endocrine glands towards the target cells target organs and this these chemical molecules these mole these messenger molecules they are being carried through the blood they pass through the circulation and through the circulation they can pass through whole body but they will bind only to the specific cells to the specific organs having the corresponding receptors present on the cells so here we are having these receptors present on the target cells and these molecules these signaling molecules travel in this blood and reach to the target this site and at the target site they get bind with the receptors so you can say that in the endocrine signaling we are having the blood which plays a very important role because the distance between the source and target is very large and to reach target quickly this blood pl plays a very important role it transports very quickly this signaling molecule from the source to the target so we are having these three modes of signaling signaling involving the messenger molecule we are having this autocrine signaling we are having this paracrine signaling and then we are having this endocrine signaling now to conclude cell cell communication or cell signaling is having two basically two modes one is without having the signaling molecule and another mode is with signaling molecule when it is without signaling molecule then the cells are in direct contact with each other that is the cells can directly communicate through some physical contacts as you can say in case of this gap junction or we are having this notch pathway then we are having this indirect signaling cell communication where we where the source of the signal synthesizes a signaling molecule and the source and the target cell communicates through this signaling molecule that is they this communication is indirect it is not direct so in this indirect signaling we are having these seven stages first we are having at the source site synthesis and then release then one is this signaling molecule is released it is being transported through the medium and it reaches to the target cell where it binds with the receptor and then it transfers the signal from this plasma membrane towards the inner side of the cytoplasm through this signal transduction and then cell responds to the signal and this effect is finally neutralized by some enzyme so this is indirect cell cell communication and this indirect cell cell communication is having three modes depending upon the distance between the source and the target cell we are having this autocrine signaling where the source and the target is same cell that is same cell is producing the signaling molecule and same cell is having the receptor for this uh, this signaling molecule then we are having this paracrine signaling that is in this paracrine we are having the source and the target close to each other they yeah. are separated by very small distance so signaling molecule passes through the diffusion and bind us with the target or present on the target cell which is uh, is present at a small distance in this case this signaling molecule passes simply through the uh, diffusion as in case of this some neurotransmitters then we are having this third mode of this signaling we are having this this endocrine signaling in endocrine signaling the distance between the source of the signal and the target is very large and this signaling molecule is being transported through the blood and this blood carries the signaling molecule from the source towards the uh, up to the target uh, cell where it binds with the receptor and accordingly uh, stimulates or inhibits the activity of this uh, target cell so main role played in this endocrine signaling is the blood it transports this signaling molecule very quickly from the source side to the target uh, side and these signaling molecules transported through this uh, blood are usually called as this uh, hormone